Hi, everybody. Thank you for coming out tonight. Uh, this is the World Campus Tech Club for Penn State. And tonight we have Kirby Plessis, who will be talking to us about uh, finding metadata in files and not just photos. And uh, you can take it from here. OK. All right. So again, my name is Kirby Plessis. I'm, I'm going to share my screen. And we're going to go to. There we go. All right, so you can see my screen, right? I'm gonna open up the chat so I can continue watching chat, maybe, if it lets me. There we go. So feel free, I mean, feel free to just ask questions too. I don't think you have to use chat, but um, I wanted to show you my website really quick. And so if you wanna know my you know, full bio, it's in the about page here toward the bottom. It just loads. Here we go. Um, that page is not loading. Watch my internet go down right now. It's going to be great. But anyway, so pluses.net is my website. Who we are, there we go. There's my bio. Um, a little bit of information in my bio. The main thing I just want to say is that I have been, uh, I started in the intelligence community with the Army, went up through several different agencies, started my own company, and now I just basically, you know, cruise around uh, and train, mostly law enforcement, but also some of the big companies, et cetera. So what we're going to talk about today is um, metadata in files. So the first thing that I think that everyone should consider doing, you're on your computers right now, go ahead and take your version, and I'm going to guess Microsoft Office, and just make a file. Just open up a, a new doc, save it, and run it through this metadata viewer right here. And I'm going, to throw, I'm going to pop that into chat. If you haven't seen this metadata viewer before, this is Jeffrey's image metadata viewer. It's probably the most popular metadata viewer out on the internet right now. And super easy to use. You're just going to choose a file, upload it, and run it through. Um, now, I don't actually have um, Microsoft Office. I have, I'm on a Mac, so I'm going to use Pages. And I think that you can only see my Chrome browser. Am I right? Do you see this, um, my Pages stuff come up or no? Right? Do you see that? See so what come up. Okay, so I think I just left you on Chrome and not actually put you on the on the different file. So I'm just gonna, I'm going to um, create a new file and just save it, just a blank file in Pages, which is again the Mac version, right? So file, let me just put a couple letters in there so I have something to save. Save it. I'm gonna save it to my downloads. Okay, no Pages. Thank you, Adam. All right, so. I saved that and I'm just going to choose that file now. You can see how many things I have in my downloads. There's an untitled, oops, untitled. We'll open that. Say that I'm not a robot. View the image data. And the key thing I want to point out is a lot of people run their photos through here, but there can be metadata in just about anything. So in the case of this, this is a, again the metadata in that pages file. Now I think that it's not going to have a lot. It doesn't have my name in it, but when you first set up Microsoft Office, a lot of times you do set up your the files with names, et cetera, in there. Um, like the very default thing, when you're first sending Microsoft Office, it pops up and it says, what's your name? What's your uh, initials? And people just fill it out. But hopefully you didn't. Um, so if you ran your a, a file through here for Microsoft Office, hopefully you didn't just see your name show back up. But if you did, Microsoft Office, if you go to the I'm trying to remember now the windows, like the little icon in the upper right corner, or up in the upper left corner. You right click. Um, sadly, oh, you say PSU uses your name. So you see that with your names at the Office 365. You can get rid of it. In Microsoft Office, an upper right, upper left, sorry, upper left corner, you click on the little icon, you go down and, and I think options, and it's somewhere in there you can delete your metadata because you don't want that metadata floating around. And the reason I'm saying you don't want it floating around is it is so easy to find. Let's go over to this tab I have over here where I'm doing a site colon PDF, psu.edu space ext colon PDF. Now I'm just looking for PDFs, but using my, uh, Google, just Google dorks, you can search for any type of file on the internet. And lots of files will have the different um, will have um, metadata. So PDFs will have metadata, but then like we said, the, the, the documents will. So DOC or EXT, which is, just stands for extension, DOCX, or 
ext colon ppt powerpoints right or ext colon pptx any of these files and excel etc all these files might have your name in it especially coming from office uh, microsoft office right and i'm looking at these urls and i'm going to hover above it but you can kind of see at the top of my url where the actual i mean of the link i'm on where the url is and it says www.personal.psu.edu so I'm going to guess personal is every every individual their own store of their their own documents is going to be in personal dot something right so I can actually switch to that if I wanted to just put personal in here dot PSU and now just go through everybody's individual files and scoop up all their files and then run it through this tool um, if I don't want to do the personal I see right here the GOSC so I'm not sure which or which um department that is, but I could just search just that department as well and get the information from that department. So I'm going to run that department right now. And then all I need to do is download all these files. There's a couple of tools. I think there's like a, a select all where you can actually box everything. I haven't used that um, add on for a while, but you can download all of these different files, run them through these metadata tools, get the eat the, the, um, Metadata, which is name, sometimes browsers, et cetera, sometimes actually, actually even printers and that sort of thing is in all of the metadata. So there's a tool that I love out there from, from 11paths.com. And if you haven't seen this tool before, it's in the labs and tools section. And I'm actually going to give you the link to it. And it's called FOCA. And if you haven't run across FOCA before, that is a Windows only tool. So I'm not going to show you demo it directly but I have a little video that I can show you about FOCA that just, it's kind of my how to when you have documents to throw them into focus. So I'm going to show you that video right now and it's only four minutes. So it should be fairly quickly. Let me know if you can't hear the audio because I worry about that, but here we go. Welcome to FOCA final version. So this is the download standalone FOCA and it sits on your own computer, doesn't talk to the internet unless you tell it to, which we will at the very end of this session. First thing you're going to do is you're going to choose that little metadata tag because as once you click the metadata tag, you get this field to drag and drop metadata into. So now find a photo and drag it into this field. So now I've dragged and dropped a photo into the metadata field and I can highlight it, right click and click extract metadata. Once I extract the metadata, again, I look to the left and I see that the metadata tree has actually grown and I go find the document and click the plus sign to dig down into the document and choose the EXIF. And now I can see the EXIF over in the right panel. This will be pretty full EXIF. So you have a lot of stuff, including the thumbnail down at the bottom. Let's go back to the main metadata field again by clicking the metadata on the left side in the tree. This time I dragged and dropped a whole folder of files, a bunch of different files, some PDFs, some Excel spreadsheets, some PowerPoints, just a whole bunch of them all at once dragged and dropped them into the FOCA metadata field. Now let's highlight them and choose extract all metadata. Now watch the tree on the left in the metadata field row and you'll start to see every file show up and the metadata summary also will start to grow with numbers. Drilling down into the files, you can see that I have 11 PDFs and then you can see all the PDFs lined up here. Everyone that has a plus sign has metadata in that file. The metadata will vary depending on how much metadata was embedded in the file. The top section that says file information, that's actually where it's hosted on your own computer, but down below where it says dates and other metadata, etc., that's coming directly from the file. Now we'll look into some of the PowerPoint files and we see that we have some metadata in this file. Again, the top section is coming from your own computer where you uploaded from, but you can see in the bottom section that the file actually has a username of N30, a folder that it came from, a modified date, etc. Now if you go down to the metadata summary, you can actually see all of the usernames that it found throughout the different files. Here are the folders that it has identified again from within the metadata that these files were hosted on. And occasionally you'll even get some printers that are embedded in the metadata of the actual file saying we were printed off of this printer. And in this case, it was printed to Adobe PDF, which you know that if you go to print something, that is one of your options. Take a look at the different software used for all of the different 
stuff that we found online. And we even found an email address out of all these files. All of them came from Windows machines and you can actually see what Windows types of computers hosted these files. Let's go back to the metadata section again and let's try analyzing metadata. So again, we highlight and now we're gonna choose this analyze metadata. This time we are sending FOCA to the internet to ping to find out what is available in the networks. And here you can see that it kind of breaks out the networks. It's guessing the PCs based on what it found in the metadata. And then down below that, it's taking those servers and it's actually pinging the servers to identify whether there's more there than was available, obviously, in the metadata. We can take a look at one of these PCs and identify you know, the type of computer it is, the username, the file, remote folder, that we found and then the document and you can see below documents to infer is going to be one of those files that is in our metadata field and we can drill down into the servers to figure out if it found any other related servers or related printers or ip addresses related to this file okay so um so Ray, you said you couldn't get FOCA to install, and I'm gonna guess here's why. So when we go to this FOCA page, and this is something I should have said before we even showed you this. Um, yeah, this, I made this video today, Adam. <laughs> I actually had it for a client, I had to make it for a client. So, so this, as we scroll through here, um, you have this download button, and that's what you're gonna download. That actually is something you have to code into another tool. So the I wouldn't use the download button, and the FOCA market are, are add-ons for FOCA. But if you want the actual FOCA, this is the tool you're going to use right here, this little um, click here for the previous version, and that's the standalone version. So, Ray, did you use the standalone version? Oh, I don't even, oh. I think so. I got a link from my work, and I tried to make it install, and it just would not work. Well, so here's the thing also. It doesn't actually install. You don't even need to install it. You can run it off of a flash drive or just in a folder. So, when you click here, and you get the folder, and you have to unzip it, then in those folders you have three folders and there's there's no instructions so you go into the bin folder and in the middle of the bin folder there's a little pink guy right just like this little guy over here and you just double click on them and there's Boca. so that's all it is yeah so really easy this is such a strong tool you can like i said you do your search um you go here you you harvest all of these files and FOCA actually used to harvest for you actually. So one of the things that FOCA is broken because they're not going to continue working on that standalone bit. They instead just kind of offered it up as um, open source. But so you can take it and build it into your other tool if you want to. But one of the things that you used to do is it used to actually go do the advanced Google dorking for you and just download everything you tell it to download. So then you put everything on a hard drive and uh, just drag it all at once, boom, into FOCA and you can run a thousand files at once. So if I was really going to target, you know, whatever department this is, GeoSC, then I could grab all that stuff, run it through there and just start, you know, I have a bunch of email addresses, a bunch of names, etc. that now are my targets for whatever nefarious purposes I'm up to. Right. So this is kind of the beginning of this stuff. Now, um, I'm going to ask you to stop recording now. People will have to see live for this next bit. Okay.